Hello, my name's Nancy Heath. I'm the Associate Dean Research and Innovation for the McGill Faculty of Education. And today I want to tell you about a new initiative of our faculty, Education for Mental Health Resilience. The Faculty of Education has made mental health resilience a strategic and research priority since 2015 in recognition of the unique position and ability to provide multidisciplinary support that we have in our faculty for this area. Specifically, we have professional, clinical, and research expertise in mental health, educational technology, and effective learning or pedagogy. This allows us to give best practice knowledge mobilization around the focus of education for mental health resilience. Why education for mental health resilience? World Health Organization identifies mental health as an area requiring accelerated action. In August 2020, the World Health Organization together with partner organizations called for a massive scale up in investment in mental health of which mental health resilience is a core aspect. What is mental health resilience exactly? We know that globally, about 20% of students, youth and young adults, have an identifiable mental illness. However, over the last 10 to 15 years, an increasing number of students have reported having significant mental health difficulties, upwards of 45 to 60 percent, indicate that these difficulties such as anxiety, depressive symptoms, and stress interfere with their ability to succeed academically and function day to day. Our services on campus and in the community are overwhelmed by the request for intensive one-on-one -on -one services by those with mental illness but also those with mental health difficulties. When we use a universal mental health resilience instruction program that affects everyone, we see that those with mental health difficulties frequently no longer request or need the intensive one-on-one -on -one services. Those with mental illness also benefit with enhanced coping skills but they do still require, in most cases, the more intensive services. Nevertheless, now our services are able to meet the needs of those with mental illness, as well as the minority of students where the mental health resilience was not sufficient, who have mental health difficulties, they too can access the needed support. We now have a situation where both our students are getting better supported for what they need, and our services are able to function. Mental health resilience is a teachable skill we know from our research and many others, and the teachable components that have been shown to be effective include the following. These teachable components can be taught to students, and we do see noticeable differences in their ability to cope with difficult circumstances and their overall well-being. Why now? Right now we have a unique set of circumstances where we have the technological complexity at our disposal to be able to teach online using an interactive effective strategy instruction approach. We know which are the evidence-based strategies that will benefit students in enhancing their mental health. And the demand for online mental health resources by students is at an all-time high. Most importantly is the increased prevalence of mental health difficulties that requires resilience building and enhanced coping skills. 
What do our existing programs look like? Our faculty has been developing education for mental health resilience programs online for over 10 years. Our current programs include programs for elementary students as they prepare to transition to high school, high school as they prepare to transition to university, pre-service teachers to deal with their own mental health and stress, as well as to support the students in their classrooms more effectively. For mental health professionals for themselves and their clients, medical residents to deal with the stress of a demanding professional program, and a lot of programs focused on university students generally and more focused, for example, for the Faculty of Engineering. How do we develop our programs? We use best practice program development guidelines where we identify the stakeholders who are involved in a program delivery within a particular context. We assess their needs to be sure that we can adapt the program elements to their context. We consolidate knowledge based on a research review, our knowledge as well as the needs assessment. And then we develop the multimedia program materials and consult stakeholders for feedback. We launch as a pilot and evaluate and evaluate using multiple methodologies. Then we revise and finalize for more general distribution. What are our program components? All of our programs include navigation guides to help students know what strategies they could use for what areas of difficulty, psychoeducation providing foundational information essential to mental health and well-being, multimedia materials including but not limited to video testimonials by students such as themselves to decrease stigma, downloadable audios that walk them through a strategy use, instructional videos with mental health professionals or peers with lived experience, podcasts with students talking about effective coping strategies on topics of interest, interactive infographics that give general information with clickable links to more specific resources, and a needs-based targeted support with online assessments that are done anonymously and automatically generating recommendations based on need. We also provide workshops and webinars that are presented by students with lived experience of mental health difficulties or mental health professionals. These are offered both live and online for your perusal later. How do we know our programs work? Our evaluation follows the most rigorous experimental design with pre-post follow-up evaluation of mental health resilience indices, where we have the intervention group and at least one or more control group. We look at pre, post, and follow-up and assess if the intervention or program we're using is actually changing the coping of the student. We also assess the outcomes using validated measures, focus groups, and semi-structured interviews. We do a service use assessment of the students, asking them to tell us about their satisfaction with the program, what they learned, and their willingness to use the skills they were taught. We also do ongoing ask, access monitoring where we look at how much is being accessed online, which and how using Google Analytics, as well as embedded program satisfaction in the actual online programs. The feedback on our programs has been very positive, with students saying things like, a program like this is great because it can help you both recognize and address what you're dealing with. Dr. DiGenova, who is the Associate Director of Assessment, Learning and Evaluation for McGill Student Services, 
notes that the program's tiered approach increases students' sense of agency by providing more accurate guidance on next steps without overwhelming on-campus resources. The program embodies best practices in post-secondary campus mental health awareness, prevention, and early intervention. Dr. Romano, the director of our Wellness Hub, notes programs like this are a critical component of McGill's student wellness activities. She goes on to talk about how essential resilience building is in terms of providing students with opportunities to build on their strengths and ultimately to help them take control of their mental health. Our proposal for McGill's Education for Mental Health Resilience initiative focuses on providing support simultaneously to both students and the educator or the service support, as well as in ahead of time in preparation and through the process, giving support and information to the university in order to support the student's mental health resilience. So on behalf of the academic leaders, research champions, inspiring faculty and dedicated students of McGill, we invite you to join us in supporting McGill's Faculty of Education for Mental Health Resilience Initiative. Thank you.